Thanks for tuning in to this message. My name is Jared Piney. I'm the online pastor here at Pathway, and I'm here with one of our worship directors and online host, Maddie Seitz. We hope this message is a valuable resource to you and helps you grow deeper in your faith. If you consider yourself a Christian and this message blesses you, I hope you'd consider giving back to us at Pathway so we can continue connecting all people to Jesus and helping them become his fully devoted followers. Learn more at pathwaychurch.com forward slash giving. And if you decide to take a step in your faith after the message today, simply visit pathwaychurch.com forward slash next so we can help provide you with resources and partner with you in this journey. Welcome Pathway family at all of our locations and those of you who are watching online to this first weekend of our brand new series, Shine. And as I was thinking about this series, I couldn't help but be reminded of a story that I heard a while back about a captain of a huge Navy ship and he saw a light directly out ahead of him and he feared that he might collide with it. So he signaled, alter your course 10 degrees to the north. And a reply then came back, no, you alter your course 10 degrees to the south. And the captain was a little bit flustered, and so he signaled, alter your course 10 degrees to the north. I am the captain. And then the reply, though, came quickly back, no, you alter your course 10 degrees to the south. I am a seaman third class. So the captain, he was furious at this point, and he signals back. Alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a battleship. And the reply, though, then came quickly back. No, you alter your course 10 degrees south. I am a lighthouse. (laughs) Man, I just thought that was great. You know, sailors have a saying, and it's simply this. Lighthouses never lie. Lighthouses shine the light, and they point people toward safe harbors. And Jesus, you know, when he was on earth, he said it this way. He said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So a key job of Christ followers is to shine the light of Jesus Christ to direct people to safe harbors through our words and through our actions. Now, as a result of this COVID-19 crisis that we've been all going through, Uh, Christ followers have really hit a fault line. And it's been harder and harder for people to be able to gather together in groups. But the good news is it's forcing all Christ followers not just to shine the light of Jesus Christ in church buildings, but to be able to shine the light of Jesus Christ out in the world. And that's really what we're going to be talking about for the next three weeks. And this first week specifically, we're going to be talking about how to shine the light of Jesus personally. And so today I want to take you to a passage of scripture in John chapter 4 that's really a powerful story of how we can do that. And to bring you up to speed on what's going on here, uh, Jesus and his disciples, they're going on a long walking trip. They're going from Judea, that's actually down in the south, uh, to Galilee, which is in the north. And it says in John chapter 4, beginning with verse 5, Now he, Jesus, had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus 
tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. So you can see from this map that the most direct route from Judea to Galilee is through Samaria. But if you were a Jew in those days, you would have to walk around Samaria in order to get to Galilee. In essence, you were going to take a three-day walking trip and you were going to turn it into a six-day walking trip. And the reason that Jews did this was because they were, there was so much animosity between Jews and Samaritans. Now, years before the time of Jesus, the Assyrians had uh, captured the northern kingdom of Israel, and some of the conquered Israelites had remained there. And the Israelites who remained there intermarried with the Assyrians. Therefore, as far as the rest of the Israelites were concerned, they had committed treason. They had committed the unforgivable sin. They had married the enemy. And the Jews saw this resulting race, the Samaritans, as unclean. And so for a devout Jew, Samaritans were to be avoided at all costs. And because of the way Jews treated the Samaritans, uh, even attacking them at times, the Samaritan hated the Jews as well. So when Jesus decided to go right through the middle of Samaria, I mean, he was really going against all social and religious norms of that day. He was purposefully making contact with these people that devout Jews they saw as sinners. And he was really putting himself and really all the rest of the disciples in a very uncomfortable and really dangerous uh, situation. So the first thing that I want to point out here that Jesus teaches us about shining the light is embrace the zone of the unknown. You see, when we are willing to step out of our comfort zones into the zone of the unknown, the light of Jesus Christ can be able to be shined through our lives. And that's what really Jesus is modeling for us here. You know, it reminds me uh, of my good friend, uh, Josh Eisler. And uh, Josh, for most of his life, was really the farthest thing from a Christ follower that you could find. But about three years ago, Josh raised his hand in a service and really surrendered his life to the person of Jesus Christ, and he was baptized. And really, from that point forward, Josh's life was totally changed. He, he uh, was freed from his addictions, and he was freed then to be able to passionately follow Jesus and to be able to share about him. But, but I want you to imagine uh, for a moment uh, the discomfort, though, that, that Josh must have had in having spiritual conversations with all those friends whom he had formally partied with for all those years. I mean, every conversation, every interaction that he had previously with them had all been about the next party or the next time. But Josh moved into the zone of the unknown. He got out of his comfort zone and, and, he, and he began to share his faith with his friends. And as a result, many of his friends have come to know Jesus as the leader and the savior of their lives, including his friend, Chris. And Chris lives out at Lake Afton, and now Chris and Josh together have started a Bible study with about a dozen people who they are reaching out to in the Lake Afton area. And they all sit together now every weekend in the weekend worship service. You see, Josh and Chris, they've embraced the zone of the unknown. And God is doing amazing things through their lives as they shine the light of Jesus Christ. And so what about you? Are you willing to step into the zone of the unknown? To be able to step out of your comfort zone and shine the light of Jesus Christ like Josh and Chris are? Are you willing are you willing maybe to walk across the street or walk across a room or, or some other kind of barrier? Because I believe if you will take that step, 
If you will take that step, God will do incredibly amazing things through your life as you shine the light of Jesus. Well, in our story, it goes on. And it says, beginning with verse 6, that it was about the sixth hour when a Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So the next lesson I want you to notice here is just give Jesus. Just give Jesus. You, you see, the one thing that every human being has in common is that our souls are thirsty. And this Samaritan woman, she tried to quench the thirst of her soul from the long, wrong well. She thought that a man could quench the longing of her soul. And she just, in the end, found herself more and more thirsty. You see, the reality was that it was midday. It wasn't the time of day when women would, from the village would go and draw water. They came in the morning to get water to wash clothes, and they came in the evening to be able to get uh, water to be able to cook and bathe. And this woman, so, who, who came to get water in midday, she was a notorious character. I mean, she was trying to avoid people because she was scoffed at by her neighbors. And she was passed around like that jar that she was carrying that day. But now, though, Jesus was offering her something different. Jesus was offering her living water, something that would truly satisfy her soul. You see, Jesus is the living water water, the only thing that can really bring healing to all that our souls long for. You know, it reminded me of being at uh, Grace Multiplied uh, this last week, and it's a residential uh, program for women to experience healing and recovery. And I was there with my home team, and we were doing some cleanup work. And Rebecca Billups, who is part of our Pathway family and leads that ministry, shared with me several stories of young women there. She told me about hope, and she told me about Laura, and she told me about destiny, and, and the incredible stories of recovery, restoration, and success that they had. But the common denominator in all of those stories was Jesus. They'd all been through numerous kinds of recovery programs to try to help them experience healing and recovery. But in the end, the only thing that ultimately satisfied the longing of their souls and brought healing to their lives was Jesus. So the lesson is, just give Jesus. He's the light. He's the safe harbor. He's the one that can truly bring healing and wholeness to all of our souls. Well, let's move on and let's see what happens next uh, in our situation, it says this, beginning with verse 15. In verse 15, it says, The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. And so the next lesson that we can learn from Jesus here is move conversations from superficial to supernatural. 
move conversations from superficial to supernatural. Because that's the way our souls get healed and the light of Jesus gets shined in our life. It happens as we move conversations from just being something that's superficial, everyday life, to being something that's supernatural. And a key way that we can do that is to pay close attention to where people are hurting at in their lives. You know, to me, it's just interesting in our story that this woman at the well, you can tell, had gone through some pretty tough times. She was hurting. And I think that's why she was so receptive to this conversation. I think that's why Jesus reached out to her. And the same is true today. Right now, more than any time in recent history, uh, because of this pandemic and because of all the political unrest, I mean, people are going through all kinds of stress and pain. And as a result, people are more and more open to spiritual conversations. You know, it says in 1 Peter 3.15, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. And so if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, the scripture obviously teaches us that we should be ready to be able to share our faith at any time with another person, to move the conversation from being something that's just superficial to being something supernatural. And so today I thought it'd be super important, kind of in light of the series and all that we are going through, to be able to share with you uh, kind of a way to be able to talk about your faith with another person. Now, one of the things that I typically do as I share my faith with someone is I kind of draw them a, a little bit of a, a picture. And, you know, I draw them a picture that looks like this, and I say something like, you know, I want to draw for you a little picture that's been helpful for me in my own spiritual journey. And then I might say something like, you know, God created the heavens and the earth and mankind and everything was perfect. I mean, it was awesome. And God and mankind, Adam and Eve, they walked on the earth and they just had an incredible uh, relationship. But something happened though. Sin entered the world. Adam and Eve, they ate from a tree that was in the middle of the garden that God told them not to. And as a result, there was a chasm that was created between man and God. And that chasm was the chasm of sin. And it broke the relationship that existed between man and God. And the Bible actually says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Of God. Every person has sinned. We've all sinned by what we have thought, what we've said, and what we have done. And the Bible goes on to say, as well, in Romans 6.23, that the wages of sin is death. If we don't ultimately deal with this chasm of sin that exists between us and God, that the scripture teaches us that we will die. Now, all of history, one of the things that man has done to be able to try to bridge this gap is that man has tried to do uh, good, good works, live moral lives. We've tried to live moral lives to try to bridge this gap between us and God. And, and we've also, we've tried to use religion to be able to try to bridge this gap between us and God. We've gone to church, we've prayed, we've done good deeds to be able to bridge that gap. But the reality is, is that man trying to bridge that gap between us and God is like us trying to swim from Los Angeles to Hawaii. I mean, some of us might make it farther than other people, but the reality is that none of us will make it. But the good news is God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for our sins and to be able to bridge that gap. And in Romans 5, 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. And now God invites all of mankind in Romans 10, 9, and 10 to be able to walk across that bridge 
and to be able to have a relationship with God. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so right there, you know, we've got a, just a simple illustration to be able to teach another person about grace, to be able to teach another person about the cross, to be able to teach them about sin, and to be able to teach them about surrendering their life to the person of Jesus Christ. Just a great little tool. And to be able to help you kind of remember all of this that I just shared, we have a great digital resource that we put together a while back, and it is called God is One Step Away. And I know that that phrase might be familiar to you, and obviously that's why it is, because God is one step away. And the way that you can find that great resource, there's going to be a link in your message notes to be able to find that today, and it's going to be out there as well on all of our social media pages. So make sure and take advantage of that, because it's just a great uh, uh, illustration and tool to be able to help you move conversations from being something that's just superficial to being something that is truly supernatural. Well, at the end of our story, we discover why it is so important to be able to shine the light of Jesus. Uh, Jesus really reveals to the Samaritan woman that indeed he is the Messiah that people have been looking for, that he is willing to save. And the Samaritan woman then realizes who Jesus is, that he is the Messiah, he is the living water. And in her excitement, she leaves her jar there at the well and she goes back into town and she begins to share with everybody the good news about Jesus. She goes out and she shines the light. And in verse 39, it says, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. You, you, you see, the woman couldn't help but be able to shine that light. She couldn't help but be able to share the good news about Jesus. And in the end, her whole community was changed. And so this week, I really want to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and have at least one spiritual conversation. Maybe this week, uh, you're eating with your family or your friends, and, and you're the only Christ follower there. And, and I know that you might uh, get a little bit of a knot maybe in your stomach, but maybe you say something like, hey, uh, do you mind if I pray before we have this meal together? Or, or maybe this week, you, you walk uh, across a room, or, or maybe you walk across the street, or some across some other kind of barrier, and maybe your mouth gets a little bit dry, and, and you reach out maybe to a, a coworker or a neighbor, and you say, hey, man, I just wanted to invite you to church or wa invite you to watch online with me. I'm having a watch party this week. Or just engage them in some kind of a spiritual conversation. But whatever you do, put yourself in the zone of the unknown. Have a supernatural conversation and see what God does as you shine the light of Jesus Christ. You know, as I was thinking about all of this, I was thinking about, it was about 50 years ago when a couple from Pathway, Archie and Georgia Ritter, walked across a street and they knocked on a door. And I think it would be fair to say that if they wouldn't have knocked on that door, I wouldn't be standing here today. The couple that answered that door were my mom and dad. And it seems strange to think about, but most of every good thing in my life, I could trace back to that day when two people walked across the street to my mom and dad's house. And I'm sure they were nervous. I'm sure they were uncomfortable, but I'm sure glad they did because you see, through that visit, my mom and dad got reconnected. They got reconnected to Christ and his church. And as a result, my brother, my sister, and I all came to know Jesus as the leader and the savior of our lives. And now all of my kids and all my nieces, they know Jesus Christ as the leader and the savior of their lives. And it can all be traced back to an Archie and Georgia Ritter because they had the courage 
to walk across the street and shine the light of Jesus Christ to some people they didn't even know. And as a result of that, a whole generation of people was changed. And so I guess the question that I have for you and the question that I have for me is, who will we shine the light of Jesus to? Who will we shine the light of Jesus to? You see, the reality is there are people all around us who will be in heaven, who will, who will come to know Jesus if we will just take one step, if we will just take one step out of our comfort zones into that zone of the unknown and move that conversation from being something that's just superficial to being something that is supernatural. And so I ask you, will you do that? Will you take that step? Will you shine the light of Jesus Christ? Because if you do, I promise you, eternity, eternity will be changed. Well, right now, what I want to do is I just want to ask everyone at all of our locations, and those of you who are watching online, just close your eyes to bow your heads just with me for a moment. I just want to talk to God in prayer. As we begin to pray today, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, I want you to think about who that person was in your life who got out of their comfort zone and shined the light of Jesus Christ and helped you come into a saving relationship with God. You see, them shining the light of Jesus, it changed your life. But the problem is, we all struggle to shine the light, to move out of our comfort zones into the zone of the unknown and ultimately move conversations from being something that is just superficial to being something that indeed is supernatural. And so today, if you want to say to God, God, I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone into that zone of the unknown, and shine the light of Jesus like someone did for me. And I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand right now at all of our locations, or if you're watching online, you can type me in the chat, but raise your hand right now. Say to God, I wanna to commit to you to be able to step out of my comfort zone into the zone of the unknown and shine the light of Jesus Christ. Raise your hand, praise God. Praise God. Praise God, I can see hands up all over right now. Praise the Lord. Me too. Me too. I want to say that to God today, just in a fresh way. Well, let me pray for us right now. Oh, Father in heaven, forgive us for so many times where we didn't shine the light. But today, God, we want to say to you, we want to commit ourselves to being able to walk out of our comfort zones into the zone of the unknown and to be able to shine your light, to be able to move conversations from being something just superficial to being something that's supernatural. God, that in some way, through taking that step, eternity might be changed. Now, as we continue to pray uh, right now, I know there's uh, others of you who have never really uh, taken that step to be able to make Jesus Christ the leader and the Savior of your life. And I know maybe today you feel like that Samaritan today. You've been searching. You've been longing for something that will satisfy your soul. And I want to let you know that Jesus is here. He's been waiting at the well for you. And he is the only one that can truly satisfy your soul. And so today, if you wanna know the one, if you wanna know the one that you've been searching for, the one that will truly satisfy the longing of your soul, I just wanna invite you. I wanna invite you to make Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of your life. And so don't miss this opportunity right now. Don't miss this opportunity to be able to know Jesus, to be able to find what your soul is longing for. And so I just want to invite you right now. Pray this prayer with me. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, 
you are everything that my soul has been looking for. And so today, Jesus, I choose you, the living water. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sin and bridging that gap between me and God. And Jesus, I pray now that you would use my life to be able to go and offer your love and your light to other people. Now, with everybody's head still bowed and eyes still closed right now, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time and you made Jesus Christ the leader and the Savior of your life, man, I just want you to raise your hand real high right now. Raise your hand real high at all of our locations right now. And if you're watching online right now, you can click the link uh, that is in the chat below. But raise your hand real high. Just as a sign to God that you are all in, that you're all in and that, so that I can pray for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I see that hand over there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I see that hand over there as well. Praise the Lord. Praise God. He is so good. He is so good. Let me, let me pray for you today. Let me pray for you. Oh, Father in heaven, I just thank you so much for my friends, my brothers and sisters who surrendered their life to you today. God, thank you so much that they found all that their soul was longing for. God, I pray that you just would uh, put on them your blessing and that you would put on them in a fresh and a powerful way your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just love you, we bless you, and we just pray all of this right now in Jesus' name.